This is a video uh, where I'm going to show you how to find the max and min slope lines for an IB physics lab report using Excel. I've moved my first graph to the bottom and my power function test, my log log graph to the bottom. Right now, all I need is the final function. That's the one that I want to see for now. This has the average dependent variable on the y. Right, so d in centimeters, where's that? d in centimeters. Oh yeah, that's my average dependent variable, the average of the three trials. That's on the y-axis. The x-axis is the modified independent variable, time to the 0.7. Where's that column? Here it is. These are the x values, time to the 0.7. <clears throat> I've got my line of best fit. I've got my equation shown. You don't show this column if you... Uh, I like to use this column as a reminder to myself of what order things come in on my data table, but you don't show it in your report. Okay, first step, you make a copy of this final function graph. You click and drag, and while your mouse is still holding down, you push on the keyboard, option if you have a Mac, or I think it's control with a PC, and then you let go, still holding option. That makes a copy. You want to change this title. This will be max and min slope lines. Or if you have a better title, go for it. Get rid of the existing trend line because we're going to have two more that we put in. So you don't want too many lines on this graph. As a reminder, max and min slope lines we draw using just the first and last data points. You ignore everything in between. You connect the vertical error bars like this for the max line. Or you connect the horizontal, uh, or you connect the vertical error bars like this for the min line. Max is steeper, right? This is steeper, so it's maximum. This one is less steep, so it's a smaller value, minimum. That's what it looks like if you use vertical error bars. You could also use horizontal error bars, and those would look like this. That would produce, hmm, would that be the maximum or the minimum? Let's compare. Okay, so yeah, the first one I did, this one, this one would be the max line because it's steeper. This would be the min line because it's less steep. So which error bars do you use? I mean, you have a choice here. What you do is you use the error bars that are larger. The ones that are larger will produce a bigger uncertainty in slope. And you don't want to use the smaller ones because you could be underestimating or misrepresenting the true uncertainty in your slope. So I'm going to get rid of these ones. You don't draw the lines manually like I just did. You do not do that. I will do it here only as a helpful reminder for what they're going to be looking like. But you don't draw them yourself. Only look at mine in the video. Because Excel is going to draw them for us in the end. OK, there are what the max min slope lines will look like at the end. Now what we need to do is tell Excel what to graph. The max slope line, we have to plug in some, we have to plug in the data, the coordinates of the first and last points. So what's the x value of our first data point? You look at your x-axis. To find the answer, you look at your x-axis, time to the point 7. So find the column with time to the point 7. Here it is. The first x value is simply the first number in that column. The last x value for the max slope line is simply the last x value on the graph. So you find, look at your x-axis, time to the point 7. Find the column, time to the point 7. Go to the bottom to get the last data point. Now, the y values. Look at your y-axis to find the first y value. That's distance in centimeters. Hmm, not these, as the individual trials. Here it is, distance in centimeters, the average. Here's the first y value, right? But the max slope line doesn't start at the first y value. We've gone down to the bottom of the first error bar. The error bar represents this uncertainty of plus or minus one centimeter. So to go to the bottom of the error bar, we have to subtract that uncertainty. Minus in the equation bar, so minus g4. For the max slope line, we are going all the way to the last data point. So find the last y value. y is distance in centimeters. So go to the bottom of that column, 
Here's the last one. And then we didn't just use that y value, we went up the error bar. So you have to add the uncertainty. For the min line, again, we just have the first and the last x values. So look at the x-axis, time to the 0.7. Oh, don't use regular old time. Those are not your x values. Your x values are modified independent variable. So find time to the 0.7, the x quantity. It's this. Here's the first point. We're not adding uncertainty to this because we're not using the x error bars. I chose to use the vertical. If instead you chose the horizontal error bars, you would be using these uncertainties and adding and subtracting those from the first and last x value. But that's not what I'm doing. For me, right now, my first x value is that. My last x value, time to the 0.7, here's that column. Here's my last x value. The uncertainties, the error bars, come into play with the y values. So my first y value for the min slope line, I find the first y value on the graph, distance, distance. And from that y value, I've gone up the error bar, so I add the uncertainty. Whoops, plus add the uncertainty for the min slope. My min slope line connects to the bottom of the last error bar. So what's the last y value? It's this one, 16. But then for the min line, I went down the error bar, so I subtract the uncertainty. Now, <clears throat> these lines you do not have in your own graph. Here's where the magic comes in. Tell Excel to draw the max and min slope lines. You want to select data. It'll be a different, you can right click on a Mac or in old Excel, older Excel for a PC. <clears throat> you want to add a series. Right now you just have one series, which is what shows these data points. Add another XY series. Call this one max slope. The x values are these here for max. Then get rid of this one. You have to delete it. Choose the y values for the max slope line. Add another series, another xy series. Call it min slope. And then for the x values, choose from your chart. That's why the chart is so useful. For the y values, choose the y values for your min line. Hit OK. Hey, there they are. See the red dots and the green triangles, the red squares? So you wouldn't need, uh, well, the line isn't shown. The equation isn't shown. How do we get those things? You right click, and this is clever, add a trend line. Show the equation, display on chart. And let's move that up. So that's my maximum slope, 2.7084. 2.7087. Right click on this one, add the trend line, display the equation. Here's my min slope. Cool. 1.8454. Right? Just like that. Easy as pie. Okay, now the problem is that these data markers, the squares, are covering my error bars and likewise for the triangles. If you like to have those there, you can keep them in. That's fine. You know, maybe you think it's a good way of showing how you found the slope line, the max, the max line, and the min line. If you don't like them, here's how you can get rid of them. Uh, you want to find the Format Data Series button. You can right-click to get it, or in the newer Excel, you may have to click that plus thing that shows up. Format the Data Series. You have a, uh, something for line, and there's another option for Marker Fill and Marker Line. You want to get rid of the marker, so change the fill color to No Fill. Change the marker line to no line. Change the color. And now it's gone. You can do the same thing here. Right click, format data point. Uh oh, data point. I don't want to format just the one, I want to format both. So let me try clicking again. There we go. Uh oh. Gosh. Now I can format the data series, the whole series. So I want to get rid of the marker line, make it no line color. For the marker fill, you could do no fill. Marker style. Oh, you can also just click no marker for marker style. That'll do it too. And now it's invisible. So that's it. What would you put into your lab report? You would copy this graph. You don't even really need to uh, 
you don't need to include this. If you want to include this data table, you would have to make sure you have appropriate units. And rather than x and y, you would want to use time to the 0.7 and d. You know, use the actual y and x variables or quantities. Uh, but, <clears throat> but you don't even need to include this. You can just show the graph. Say, I added trend lines connecting, you know, you would say into your report, something along the lines of, the lines of, huh. You would say something along the lines of, I used Excel to add a trend line connecting the bottom of the first data point to the top of the last error bar, bottom of the first error bar, top of the last. And that was my max, that gave me my max slope. I likewise used Excel to connect the top of the first error bar or the top of the error bar on the first data point to the bottom error bar on the last data point. And I used that uh, equation that Excel provided to find the minimum slope. And uh, and then you would just show the graph, say these lines and slope values are depicted in the graph below. And then you don't even, even need to show this stuff. So what does this earn you? Well, one, you don't have to print out your graph, manually draw the lines, and scan it back in. Two, you don't have to calculate the max slope using the slope formula. And you don't have to show a sample calculation for that equation. You don't have to do it. This way, Excel does it for you. And you say, I just used Excel. So it, it actually cuts down the amount of work that you have to do. Now, in the next video, uh, I'm going to show you how to use these values, the max and min slope values, to find the absolute uncertainty in the slope, absolute uncertainty, and also how to find the percentage uncertainty in the slope. And if you really want to crush it, if you have extra time on your hands, you feel like, you know, why not? I'll do this too. You can also find the absolute uncertainty in the y-intercept using these two values and the percentage uncertainty in the y-intercept. That's the next thing I'll show you. Those two, uh, four calculations, if you include them all, those four calculations would be shown in your lab report, not in Excel the way I'm going to do it.